Hello, everyone. This is Professor He. Nice to see you again. The topic of this task is about the adiabatic throttling process. Throttling valves are any kind of flowing restricting devices that causes a significant pressure drop in the fluid. Some familiar examples are ordinary adjustable valves, caliper tubes, and porous plugs, as shown in figures. As we have shown in Project 2, the enthalpy of the fluid remains approximately constant during such a throttling process. Unlike turbines, they produce a pressure drop without involving any work. The pressure drop in the fluid is often accompanied by a large drop in temperature, and for that reason, throttling devices are commonly used in refrigeration and air conditioning applications. The magnitude of the temperature drop during a throttling process is governed by a property called the jar thompson coefficient, which is represented by the temperature behavior of a fluid during a throttling process and is defined as throttling valves are usually small devices and the flow through them may be assumed to be adiabatic since there is neither sufficient time nor not enough error for any effective heat transfer to take place. Also, there is no work done and the change in potential energy, if any, is very small. Even though the exit velocity is often considerably higher than the init velocity, in many cases, the increase in kinetical energy is insignificant. Then, the conservation of energy equation for this single stream steady flow device reduces too. The magnitudes of the velocities are the same, and then we have that is, enthalpy values at the init and exit of a throttling valve are the same. For this reason, a throttling valve is sometimes called an isentropic device. Note, however, that for throttling devices with large exposed surface areas, such as calipery tubes, heat transfer may be significant. Thus, the final outcome of a throttling process depends on which of the two quantities increases during the process. If the flow energy increases during the process, it can do so at the expense of the internal energy. As a result, internal energy decreases, which is usually accompanied by a drop in temperature. If the product PV decreases, the internal energy and the temperature of a fluid will increase during a throttling process. In the case of an ideal gas, the temperature has to remain constant during a throttling process. For the real gas, the temperature variation depends on its jar thompson coefficient. 
the relationship between the jar Thompson coefficient and other parameters can be determined according to the second dh equation. And then we have temperature change during a throttling process. This means the temperature variation depends on the following values. A careful look at its defining equation reveals that the jar Thompson coefficient represents the slope of constant H lines on a TP diagram. Such diagrams can be easily constructed from temperature and pressure measurements along during throttling process. A fluid at a fixed temperature and pressure, T and P, is forced to flow through a porous plug, and its temperature and pressure downstream are measured. The experiment is repeated for different sizes of porous plugs, each given a different set of T and P, plotting the temperatures against the pressures gives us a constant H line on a TP diagram as shown in the figure. A throttling process proceeds along a constant incipient line in the direction of decreasing pressure, that is, from right to left. Repeating the experiment for different seats of inlet pressure and temperature and plotting the results, we can construct a TP diagram for a substance with several constant H lines as shown in figure 9.22. Some constant incipient lines on the TP diagram pass through a point of zero slope or zero jar Thompson coefficient. The line that passes through this point is called the inversion line, and the temperature at a point where a constant incipient line intersects the inversion line is called the inversion temperature. The temperature at the intersection of the P equals zero line and the upper part of the inversion line is called the maximum inversion temperature. Here, please notice that the slopes of the constant H lines are negative and states to the right of the inversion line and positive to the left of the inversion line. Therefore, the temperature of a fluid increases during a throttling process that takes place on the right-hand side of the inversion line. However, the fluid temperature decreases during a throttling process that takes place on the left-hand side of the inversion line. It is clear from this diagram that a cooling effect cannot be achieved by throttling unless the fluid is below its maximum inversion temperature. This presents a problem for substance whose maximum inversion temperature is well below room temperature. For hydrogen, for example, the maximum inversion temperature is minus 68 degrees centigrade. Thus, hydrogen 
must be cooled below this temperature if any further cooling is to be achieved by throttling. And soon in this figure, can you figure out the outlet temperature after this throttling process? You will remember that a fluid may experience a large drop in its temperature as a result of throttling, which forms the basis of operation for refrigerators and air conditioners. This is not always the case, however. The temperature of the fluid may remain unchanged or it may even increase during a throttling process. The correct answer must be checked on the TP diagram of a substance with the initial state and or the pressure drop. Okay, that's all for this task. Thank you very much and see you next time. Thank you.